Alright, T, check. Ginormous tablet, check. <laughs> this thing takes up like my whole desk. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome to a giant tablet episode. <laughs> so, I have had questions about this for a while. So we recently got this uh, giant tablet. This is the S8 Ultra. And I think this is the middle of the road one. It's got the 12, 12 gigs of RAM and the 256 gigs of storage. Anyways, uh, camera lady, like the first thing she asked when she was playing with it was, ooh, can we edit photos on this? And I was like, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how well that's gonna go because there's some issues. So I figured that's what this video would be about. I wanna show you guys some possible workflows for editing like actual photos on here, you know, photos from stuff like this. Um, because, you know, traveling light is awesome and not having to bring a giant laptop, you know, I don't, I don't have any of those cool thin laptops like an M1 or some Ultrabook or something, which I, I should probably look into. <laughs> I just have these ginormous laptops that have like charging bricks that are like, Whoa. that are like as big as the camera, you know, or like bigger than my camera. So I, I hate bringing my laptops and charging bricks that are the size of my backpack with me. I thought this would be really cool to be able to edit photos and th I mean, this will fit in all of my camera bags and, and um, it's super light and good on battery and all that stuff. So it has the potential theoretically to be uh, a decent laptop replacement for shorter trips or whatever for editing. And then of course it has the handy dandy stylus, which I love. So before we go any further, just know this isn't sponsored in any way, shape or form. Uh, this is just what I have and it's just questions that I had and um, that's it. So let's just go over a couple of things with Android. So I didn't get this tablet to edit photos on. That was just kind of a side like, ooh, can we do this? Um, mostly my wife and son use this tablet for tablet-like things. So what are some problems? Well, the, the main problem is that it's Android. It's Android power, it's not window powered. So that means unfortunately, there's just no good options or like fully developed options for like a full Lightroom or Photoshop version or fuller. You know, the iPad has like a better version of Photoshop, which is like almost desktop like, but, but not quite, you know, but still way better than anything we have on Android. So it's unfortunate, but Android is so broken and so fragmented um, that it's hard for developers. So I understand why Adobe hasn't done it. Although I think they still could if they really wanted to. Anyways, the first part of a workflow that I would have for editing on the go would be getting images onto here. So there's a couple of ways to do that. There is on this Ultra, there is a micro SD card. So if you shot with an SD card with a micro SD card, you could conceivably just do that, you know, just dump it onto here. You can plug the camera straight in via USB-C. Um, or you can use, you know, one of the, like your card reader that's USB-C and that's what I did. And the card reader that's USB-C worked just fine with my R5 and my R6. So you get your photos on there and obviously this is going to be a first limitation of the tablet is that you're limited to the amount of size of hard drive space that you have on the tablet unless you're going to back that up to another hard drive. So here's the biggest issue though is that using the tablet, um, the Lightroom mobile for Android does not, cannot read my CR3 files. So if you have a Canon camera that shoots CR3, which is most of the newer Canon cameras, um, Lightroom can't read those. Let's just jump into the tablet and we'll start from there with the workflow. And I'm just gonna go over uh, a couple of things. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is there's a little walk around to get Lightroom to, I guess, read or at least acknowledge the CR3 files. Um, and that is if we go into, if we go into the files, so we can see right here that I've got some CR3 files that I brought in from my cameras from the R5 and the R6. And these files, like, so for starters, we're not even seeing the, th the th thumbnail for them because the Samsung doesn't read that either. Uh, and if we go into Lightroom, it's the same business. 
it's not going to show up. So we come back into here. Uh, this is the get around. So if we long press this and we click share and then we go share to Lightroom, then it will add it. So the weird thing is about Lightroom is that, you know, it's not going to show you by default. It's not going to show you like your most recently added. It's going to put them like by the metadata, which I don't like. And I don't use Lightroom at all. Like I, I don't ever use Lightroom on my computer. So this is the only time that I use Lightroom is on my phone uh, or this tablet now. And I, I much prefer Photoshop and Bridge or Bridge and Photoshop, but that's for another another day. But anyway, so here... Here's one of them, right here is the raw. And if we click on this, what I question is that if Lightroom couldn't read the raw, I don't know how it's reading it now, or like, I don't know how that workaround works, but it, it does work. So we're gonna click on info, and we can see right here that this does say it's a CR3, and it shows it's the full res of the R5, and it's got my metadata there. So that's pretty cool. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to do a little bit of an edit here. Uh, I didn't put my presets on here yet. I need to get around to that. I really do love editing with this pen though. It's quite nice. So there's just a super quick edit a little before and after and it seems to be if we're looking like in the shadows and the details and all of that stuff it seems to be pretty like there's not a whole lot of breaking apart in some of the heavier edited edited areas of the image so you know I'm pretty happy with that I don't think overall that it handles the raw files as well as you know, the, the PC would or, or the, the bigger app would, but that's pretty nice. Um, let's look at, let's look at one more. So here is the other one that I brought in. And this one, I believe, yeah, this one's from my R6. So also CR3, but slightly smaller, well, half the size and resolution. Um, but let's see how this does with the highlights and stuff. So we're pushing this pretty hard now, but we're not seeing, I'm not seeing any breaking in like these shadows where the blues are increasing like the saturation and stuff. I'm actually not even having to do too much to this image. I kind of... I kind of just like that, like sometimes you just don't need to go super crazy. Yeah, I kind of like, kind of like, so there's the before and the after. I like the natural split toning, the dichotomy between the uh, the yellows and the highlights, you know, the warm, the warm highlights and the blues and the shadows. Those are just natural complementary colors. And I like that a lot. I like that as a square crop, just taking out that, emphasizing this a lot, actually. This, there's not much to add a value on this side of the, of the image. So let's go ahead and we'll do a custom crop. So now what I want is I want this peak, this dune right here, right on the third. Just like that. Yeah, I'm surprisingly happy. I've edited this image before. Um, but it's always good to revisit edits. And I'm noticing that I edit differently on the tablet and the phone 
because of the workflow and the restrictions and all of that. There's there's different ways to edit, um, and it, it I think that's fun to try something that or a workflow that I wouldn't have done before because I might get a different edit out of an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this like this actually. All right, so let's take a look at one more program. Let's go into Snapseed. So it looks like Snapseed actually can't read my CR3 files because they're not showing up. When I click on the download, they're not anywhere in here. These are only JPEGs and DNGs from the phones. It should be noted that it doesn't have any problem reading images from the phones, but if I go back up to here and try that same Lightroom trick. If I go, this is one of the CR3s, and I select that and go to share, and then go to Snapseed, it says could not load photo. So let's look at a shot from the phone through Snapseed because you can shoot in expert raw mode or pro mode with your phone and then sync it with the tablet, which is really nice. Um, I don't think it's quite airdrop level yet. I've heard really good things about the, the Mac integration with airdrop and stuff, but I know Samsung has the the new share thingy between the Samsung devices. So we can see here there's an expert raw mode uh, and there's a bunch of photos from that I took from expert raw. So this is what I'm talking about right here. This is looking really dark and you'll see down here in the bottom left hand corner how it says raw. So that's showing me uh, that it is a raw file and we can do the the basic raw adjustments here so it doesn't look like highlights are doing anything that's kind of weird but shadows are doing a lot like a lot a lot so now you can see the histogram moving from when we're adjusting the shadows. But notice how the highlights aren't dropping. That is super weird. But look at all that data we're getting back in the shadows. All right, well, you know what? I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna hit okay. So now we're in the regular editing mode and we have all these options and all that stuff. So now I'm gonna go into the regular editing. Now you'll see in the bottom left of the histogram, it's adjusting the highlights slightly, but you can tell in this top left area where it was blown out, there's not any detail there to work with anyways. So I'm not gonna mess with that. All right, I don't want to push this image too hard because it is a phone image and I don't really want to break it, but you can tell that's before from the raw and that's the after. So there's definitely pros and cons and you can use both or whatever editing you want multiple, you know, you could do the, the basics in Lightroom or the basics in Snapseed and then vice versa, you know, whatever you want. But basically I just wanted to show like the workflow and some of the editing options um, obviously there's different and more editing apps out there for your photos and stuff and I didn't do anything crazy at all. I think this has potential, but unfortunately this is one of those things where I personally for my workflow, I don't think it's quite enough. It's, I think it's great for if I were um, either not doing anything photo specific in terms of like taking lots of images and I just had a few that I wanted to play with or if I just wanted to travel real light and use my phone and then sync it to the tablet and then have you know, the bigger screen to edit for the tablet or to get test images and edit those and kind of just get a rough idea um, on location or while I'm flying or traveling or whatever. Then I think that's a really cool, very light portable option. I just want you to keep in mind those downsides of Android right now. And, and I am an Android guy, I've never used a Mac or, or any Apple products and they do great stuff. That's just, it's not for me, but 
I think that Android has a lot of catching up to do. And it's unfortunate because Samsung made like this great tablet and it's really limited by the apps and the software and, and the other people like Adobe and Snapseed and all that who don't put as much developing effort into the Android side, which again is understandable, but still unfortunate. All right, well, I'm gonna wrap it up here. If you guys have any questions on the tablet workflow or anything you wanna know uh, that I didn't go over concerning you know, dealing with all of this stuff, leave those in the comments below and I will definitely answer them. Thanks for sticking around. If you made it this far, I super appreciate it. Hit that like button for me. That's the best thing you can do for the channel. And I will see you in the next episode.